But you know, you, you were just starting to to talk a little bit about what you know. We talked about you know space that represents all the stuff that's in the universe. The question is, what does that stuff do? And for that, we have to start talking about time and what is time and so on. And you know, one of the the basic idea of this model is time is the progression of computation. So in other words, we have a a structure of space. And there is a rule that says how that structure of space will change. And it's the application, the repeated application of that rule that defines the progress of time. Um, and what does the rule look like in, so, the, in the space of hypergraphs? Right, so what the rule says is something like, if you have a little tiny piece of hypergraph that looks like this, then it will be transformed into a piece of hypergraph that looks like this. So that's all it says. It says you pick up these elements of space and the, you can think of these, these uh, edges, these hyper edges as being relations between elements in space. You might pick up uh, these two relations between elements in space. And we're not saying where those elements are or what they are, but every time there's a certain arrangement of elements in space, then arrangement in the sense of the way they're connected, then we transform it into some other arrangement. So there's a little tiny pattern and you transform it into another little pattern. That's right. And then. Because of this, I mean, again, it's kind of similar to cellular automata in that, like, yes. on paper, the rule looks like super simple. It's like, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, right. From this, the universe can be born. Uh, but, like, right. once you start applying it, beautiful structure starts being uh, potentially can be created. And what you're doing is you're applying that rule to different parts. Like right. to any time you match it within the hypergraph. Exactly. And then one of the like incredibly beautiful and interesting things to think about is the order in which you apply that rule. Yes. Because that pattern appears all over the place. Right. So this is a big, complicated thing, very hard yeah. to wrap one's brain around. Okay. So so you, you say the rule is every time you see this little pattern, transform it in this way. But yet... You know, as you look around the space that represents the universe, there may be zillions of places where that little pattern occurs. Yeah. So, so what, what, what it says is just do this, apply this rule wherever you feel like. And what, what is n extremely non-trivial is, well, okay, so, so this is happening sort of in, in computer science terms sort of asynchronously. You're just doing it wherever, wherever you feel like doing it. And the only constraint is that if you're going to apply the rule somewhere, the the things to which you apply the rule, the, the little you know elements to which you apply the rule, if they if they have to be okay, well you can think of each application of the rule as being kind of an event that happens in the universe. Yep. And these the input to an event has to be ready for the event to occur. That is, if one event occurred, if one transformation occurred and it produced a particular atom of space, then that atom of space has to already exist before another uh, transformation that's going to apply to that atom of space can occur. So, yeah, so that's like the prerequisite for the event. That's right. Exist. That's right. So it, 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 that defines a kind of uh, this sort of set of causal relationships between events. It says this event happens, has to have happened before this event. Right. But that is... Um, but that's, that's not a very limiting constraint. No, it's that's, not. And what's it's still you still get the zillion uh that's a technical yeah, well, term <laughs> options. That's correct. 